Hello and welcome to this week in Israel. Bagdan here, your host for the next couple of minutes. I hope that you're all doing great. And guys, without making this intro too lengthy, let's start with the quiz question for this week, which involves Senegal's exports. And it goes like this. To whom did Senegal export the most in 2021 in terms of value? And the options here are Switzerland, India, or the third option, Mali. And uh, guys, the correct answer is Mali with some $1 billion worth of exports, followed by Switzerland with almost $750 million, while the third largest uh, export destination was India with almost $510 million. And uh, just for information, guys, in case you're wondering, uh, almost half of Senegal's exports towards Mali are petroleum related. And uh, now with the quiz question being covered, I will move on to the Freitas index. And here the overall index moved uh, downwards once again, although not by much in both relative and uh, absolute terms. And here, the, once again, the tight capacity management of the carriers, I think it's doing its job, if you ask me. The next couple of weeks uh, are going to be very, very interesting as the peak season, if there will be one, will approach. Uh, my guess is that uh, the general index will increase a couple of percentage points uh, starting with uh, late July, most probably. And it will be a really, really good indicator about how the um, small and medium companies are seeing the months ahead in terms of business confidence. Of course, if uh, this potential increase is uh, going to happen, it's important to factor in also the inflation, the volumes and so on. But uh, as I was saying, what's going to happen in the next couple of months in terms of uh, freights, it will be a really, really good indicator about the level of uh, confidence people in general and the small and medium companies in particular are having at the macro level. So uh, back to the general index here in absolute terms for week uh, 27, the Freitas index set at uh, $6,495 with uh, big movers here involving the North America East Coast to North Europe sub index who was up 26% and the North Europe to China sub index was down 15%. For uh, the main trade holes for the Trans-Pacific trade lanes, uh, we have here $7,409 for uh, China to North America West Coast sub index and $9,882 for China to North America East Coast sub index. So basically both uh, down 2% from the previous week. For uh, the crosswise sub indexes, finally guys, we have uh, here a little bit of uh, downward momentum, especially on the China to Mediterranean sub index, which was down uh, 3%. So bringing the absolute value to $12,439. And if you ask me, there is still room to slide down another, I don't know, 3 to 5%. As for the China to North America sub index, things are more contained with all the potential strikes and the congestion in the North European ports. And we have here $10,471 in absolute terms. But here too, I won't be surprised to see another 3% downward readjustment on, I don't know, week 28 or 29. And again, it all comes down to how businesses are perceiving the months ahead in terms of demand and sales. And here I will venture a bet uh, the Trans-Pacific headholes will see some kind of contained downwards uh, trend, while for the crosswest ones, well, um, North Europe and the, the Mediterranean, I think that things are going to be more volatile as the inflationary pressures are felt more in Europe than the, in the United States, if you ask me. And this is just how I read all the news and signs coming from the European Central Bank and other regional agencies. I really, really hope that I will be wrong on this one. So we just have to wait and see together what's going to happen. But anyways, moving now to the actual news here. The first one is coming from supplychaindive.com and it's about lazy boy supply chain adjustments 
that uh, seem to have already begun to pay off in terms of uh, shorter lead times for uh, their customized products, which from, I don't know, four to seven months lead time are now in the area of 10 to 14 weeks. So it's definitely a gain here. It seems also that uh, the company is uh, increasing its foothold more regionally by opening two list uh, manufacturing plants in Mexico and by reactivating a portion of its upholstery manufacturing facility in uh, Newton, Mississippi. If you ask me guys here, I don't know, these kind of supply chain readjustments are on the agendas of uh, both the big and small uh, companies alike. And I don't know if the bottom line shows that uh, things can be sourced or manufactured out of China, they will be sourced or manufactured out of China, simply as that. And uh, right now it's uh, not just about uh, the freights, but about, I don't know, predictability and stability that at the moment uh, China lacks. The rising uncertainties or, I don't know, ethical sourcing uh, challenges. And here you can see the Uyghur problem and the list uh, goes on. It's a really, really, really challenging uh, time for China. But anyways, I don't expect that, I don't know, all of a sudden every major US or European manufacturer will leave China. But for sure, they will be more cautious about increasing their uh, capabilities there. Or I don't know, maybe we will witness some uh, disinvestments in the coming years because uh, China's competitive advantages are not easily substitutable, but if the opportunity arises to relocate in a more predictable environment, for sure some of the businesses will do just that. And not for the sake of, I don't know, regionalization or nearshoring, but because right now, if you ask me, uh, China is readjusting itself to its new economic and uh, geopolitical ambitions. So anyways, enough about China, guys. And now I'll move to my uh, second news. It's coming from Splash27.com and uh, it involves Vietnam, which is a country that uh, benefited a lot from uh, the Chinese clumsiness, if you want. As it seems that uh, Terminal Investment Limited, which is the terminal operations arms of a Mediterranean shipping company, together with Vietnam National Shipping Lines and Saigon Port, teamed up for the development of a massive transshipment hub in the southern part of uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Unfortunately, it doesn't say anything about the amount needed for the investment, uh, but it seems that the proposal is uh, greeted favorably by the Vietnam's authorities. And for me, theoretically, this is a win-win situation for both parties. As on the one hand, Vietnam's ambitious plans for uh, developing a national container shipping line can find in Mediterranean shipping company a good partner. While on the other hand, uh, MSC could secure a strategic partner in the region, diverting why not some of the volumes uh, from Singapore to this uh, greenfield terminal. I won't ask myself why MSC was chosen as a partner, but I could venture for uh, some uh, guesswork. Uh, most probably the fact that MSC is privately owned, uh, non-Chinese company and uh, answers to no shareholders. I think that uh, these uh, facts combined uh, weighted a lot when uh, both parties decided to go ahead with this project. I don't know, it's just an opinion. So anyhow, it's a really, really interesting move done by both MSC and the Vietnamese authorities. And now, now let's see how it will develop further. And for sure, it's worth following up. And uh, now, guys, I will move to my next news. I think it's the third one, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the third one. And it's covering Azerbaijan exports. And here I will be as briefly as I can. And uh, basically, Azerbaijan's uh, non-exports, uh, non-oil exports, sorry, increased by almost $281 million in the first uh, quarter of this year, with uh, cotton yarn coming first with almost uh, $124 million. And yes, Azerbaijan is a major cotton exporter. Just look up on Google, Azerbaijan Cotton King. 
Tomatoes came second with some 90 million dollars while Carbomide, I hope I've pronounced it correctly, was the third largest exported product with 84.1 million dollars. As for the main trading partners, and I will stop here with the coverage of this article, Turkey came first, uh, Russia second, and the Republic of uh, Georgia third, confirming basically Azerbaijan's regional reach, if you want. So that's the news about Azerbaijan's exports in the first uh, four months. And now I will move to my last one. It's coming from UNCTAD and uh, it covers the international trade in developing economies. It's a really long article, very useful if you ask me. Uh, don't worry, I won't deep dive and uh, list the entire findings. Instead, I will highlight here the chapter regarding uh, China's uh, rising importance in uh, the global trade. And basically, it sums up the last uh, 20 or so years of uh, China's progress and transition from uh, labor-intensive and resource-intensive manufacturing in the early 2000s to the current high-skill and uh, technology-intensive uh, manufacturing. Um, the article covers also the current challenges when it comes to, I don't know, trade, the openness of the developing economies in uh, relation with the trade uh, or I don't know how the developed economies interact with the least uh, developed ones. It's a really, really interesting and condensed article. And uh, again, if you have the time and the curiosity, of course, to read it, please do so, as this is a really, really, really interesting report. And uh, guys, with this being said, that's all for today. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you've enjoyed. Don't forget to hit those uh, tiny buttons below this video. And as usual, until next time, keep your business safe. Thanks.